Hi everyone, my name is Alessandro Baldasseroni and uh, I'm lead character artist at uh, NVIDIA. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you a couple of techniques to achieve um, uh, memory folds on your, on your models. And what are memory folds? They're basically uh, permanent wrinkles, like the ones that you can see here, which are basically embedded in the fabric of your, of your clothing. They're going to stay there even in, uh, in animation or when you apply uh, a simulation with some software, you know. Um, they're pretty cool, they give a lot of like realism to, to clothes. All clothes to an extent, they have this kind of like um, wrinkles here. Uh, as you can see, unless they are like super treated with, you know, iron, but they show a certain effect these are scans, but just to give you an idea of this kind of like, um, you know, uh, noise that you can see on the fabric, on most fabric. And this one is actually a piece of paper, a crumpled paper, but actually gives you an idea of uh, what memory folds are and how much realism they can actually give to your, to your government if they are properly uh, executed. So let's go to ZBrush and let's keep this thing in a corner as sort of reference. This is a subtool of a, of a model that I've been working on. So a good habit since the beginning is of course like to have enough resolution for, for sculpting and then uh, to save a morph target, store the state of your model and then create a new layer so we can see the, the back and forth. Uh, one of the first most obvious thing that you can do is to actually use the damp standard brush which is pretty versatile. Lazy mouse on, lazy radius about 30 and then we can try to replicate this kind of like zigzag pattern that you can see here and uh, more or less all around so we try to do one crease in one direction and the other one which basically goes inward and then we try to keep going now it's definitely something easy that you don't really need any specific alpha or anything like that definitely Pretty, it's pretty effective if it's done properly. I'm not saying I'm doing it properly, but just gives you an idea. And of course, since we saved uh, the morph target, we can always jump in the morph brush and attenuate some areas. Now we can keep going one direction and then the other one so this basically creates one crease outward and one inward which is basically the idea of the of the permanent wrinkles of course you can always like make this one softer playing with the transparency of this layer another layer that you can put on top involve using the crumple brush which is pretty interesting uh, crumple uh, just be sure to remove the RGB content I think by default it comes with the RGB con component but just just remove it and all you have to do with this brush is to basically do some sort of like circular movement with it in one direction you can try also like one single direction or the other just be careful because this brush actually changed the values of uh, of your mesh quite a lot so just try to be to be subtle with it and again of course we can always jump back and fix like some more obvious deformation, but the crumple brush definitely gives some uh, nice 
perturbation on the on the surface so you know if it's used like uh, properly it can definitely be be useful just don't don't overdo it otherwise like your model is gonna look like pretty 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 jugged out but it's definitely it's definitely helpful to add some like interesting kind of like texture and of course the most obvious thing that you can do is to actually look for internet for you know either like a photo of a um, the wrinkled type of like garment or even like um, crumpled paper is very useful for this like in this case and what you want to do is to extract an aid map out of this and you, before to do that you can use the uh, software uh, I mean you can you can definitely like turn this image in example in black and white and use it as it is it's probably not the best way because there's a lot of like uh, highlight and shadow information what you see so probably the best thing to do is to uh, use a software like Crazy Bump, which does like a great job to convert this into a height map, um, which is not the same thing as like converting this in like black and white, of course. And then you can use this height map as your alpha brush. So in this case, uh, let's turn this off. I'll show you this one as well. So you go to standard brush. Uh, let's use a head map which alpha kind of like looks like this and all you have to do is use the drag rectangle as a mode instead of like the free end or the dots one drag rectangle and you just stamp it like this this of course by itself is a great base it looks kind of like you know like a surface of a rock sometimes but it's a very nice texture to use as a base for place something else on top maybe like you know the main wrinkles I mean sorry the main permanent wrinkles which have like directionality like this ones but definitely this one uh, with the alpha gives like very nice base to start from and uh, there is a technique by an artist called uh, uh, Daniel Daniel Reese. I hope that I spell his name correctly. This is our station page, and he has like a quite nice, quick, uh, quite nice uh, uh, animated GIF that show you how to get uh, wrinkles very very easily in, uh, in Photoshop. So all credits goes to him. I'm just gonna show you quickly how to do something similar in Photoshop. So let's create a new document uh, 4k by 4k is good enough and all you have to do is basically to use the, the gradient tool uh, in the diamond shape here and just be sure that the mode is set to difference this is very important uh, the gradient goes to from uh, white to black and all you have to do is to stamp shapes like this all around to fill out the canvas just try to not you know go on top of what you already done otherwise the result is gonna be a little bit uh, messy in the center so when you get something like this you invert it I mean it's not strictly necessary but depends on the the, the mode that you want, if it's like adjective or subtractive and let's save this as like crumple crumple 2 oh, ok back to ZBrush so let's make another layer and instead of this one we use the the one that we just created Oops, uh, I think we call it crumple to. Okay, it's basically the same thing. It's fairly, maybe it's a little bit less realistic than the one that we did before, 
but it's a very it's very fast to to achieve at least and it works pretty well in some uh, maybe in some areas maybe not not all together you can always like of course maybe the scale of this is I don't like this thing in the center but you can you can make your own like much better than this I guess but just this gives you an idea of this kind of like folds that you can achieve pretty easily making your own texture in uh, in Photoshop and then of course you can overlay the other ones as well and see how the results look like I mean, it's an option. It's a definitely a quick, quick and quick and dirty technique to achieve a height map for your permanent wrinkles. And this pretty much, I guess, like cover ups uh, what you can do in terms of uh, of modeling when it comes to ZBrush. And uh, let's have a look at something in actually Substance Painter. This is a model I've been working on for Nvidia for a while. And uh, what you can do actually in Substance Painter is to use a brush when you actually where you actually stamp these permanent wrinkles. It's pretty useful because in Substance Painter you have a fairly realistic illumination and PBR materials, so you see right away uh, without baking the effect of uh, applying um, permanent wrinkles. All you have to do is like to create a new layer. And uh, you basically only need the height channel. Just be sure that uh, you have something different than a zero value. So either like positive or negative is, is okay. Just don't leave it at zero. Otherwise, it's not gonna stamp anything. And you select your your brush. In my case, I already done it, of course. Um, uh, collect crumple, and he has the height map that I previously built. All you have to do is stamp this thing a few times all around and it does the job pretty well as you can see. It really adds like an extra touch of like realism to the quality of, uh, of your fabric. So as you can see it's like without and with the permanent wrinkles. It definitely feels more, more warm, more realistic and uh, so it's definitely something that I would recommend to to do when you are pretty sure that your main main folds and secondary folds are, are in place. Uh, it definitely adds something. So this basically cover-ups what I wanted to show you and uh, thanks a lot for watching.